Greetings Warlords, Raj here taking a look at a couple Gripping Beast box sets, Goth Noble Cavalry, Late Roman Heavy Cavalry. Now as some folks will know, Gripping Beast often has very similar sprues, kind of double sets so to speak, so I'm going to review these together. We're going to take a look at the sprues, we're going to assemble some of these guys, see how they build, and then I'm gonna paint some, and I'm gonna try out the Army Painter Speed Paint. You get four of these sprues in a box, so you're looking at 12 riders total. The bases you get are these things, so if you're using these for Saga or another skirmish game, you're probably gonna have to provide those yourself. Now the sprues are very similar, like I said, this is the Roman sprue and the Goth Noble sprue, so the horses are the same, same weapon options, same bodies, the difference comes to the shields and the heads. Let's take a look at the Roman sprue first. So let's talk about the similarities. The horses are going to be the same between the sprues, they look pretty good. I like that they have the uh, kind of reins coming down where the neck joins and uh, that'll save me some green stuff for sure. Trying to make a seamless neck joint is often a problem on horses. Looking at the weapons, we've got a few different options. There are four spears, two swords, two axes. So you're looking at about 20 extra weapons when all is said and done. An interesting thing, if you do like the Gripping Beast spears, maybe over the Victrix spears, you're gonna have a lot of extra of those. And for example, on the Victrix Vikings, you know, we know those spears are kind of spindly and these joints are actually the same kind of joints that are on those Viking models. So you could straight up use these spears on the Viking model kit. And same thing with the swords too. We've got the three bodies are the same between the kits and uh, two are rather dynamic and then one kind of plain Jane pose. You're looking at eight different heads. I would say four of these are quite similar. Uh, those, are, those are good heads for, for Gripping Beasts. They're known for some ch chonk, some chonky heads, and especially the late Roman infantry heads. You know, guy with the big butt chin, they all look very similar. So uh, these would be great for swapping in on the infantry. Over here, you've got some bigger heads, a little chonkier. So you have two of them with kind of neck guards. These two are mast heads. Uh, this one is tilted to the side, so you're probably gonna have uh, some mold lines to remove there. But overall, good selection of heads. You're gonna end up with 20 extra heads at the end of it. And for the shields, you got, you know, if you want your oval shields or your circle, they've got you covered. Sometimes these GB kits are kind of empty, but this is a pretty pretty full sprue here. So let's take a look at the Goths now. Like I said, only difference is down here. You don't have any extra shields with this kit. What you do get are uh, this cool dragon here. You're gonna have to chop up a spear or maybe this thing to mount it. But other than that, we've got excellent Goth heads. Now these are really good for uh, gripping beast heads. There's a lot of sharp detail here. You get seven heads total. So you're gonna end up with, I think 16 extra goth heads. So these are these are great. You could put these on the Dark Age Warriors or the you know plastic Vikings. I think these heads would fit on a lot of things. And you're gonna want some cav with your goth army if you're playing Saga. And so you probably wanna get two boxes of these, of these and you're gonna have enough heads to outfit your entire infantry in these cool, cool goth helmets. Now let's see how these guys build up.
went together well. Not too bad as far as mold lines go. Not like a Games Workshop plastics or anything like that. And the mold lines are actually very faint on, on the legs. So, yeah, very easy to clean those up. Now, although the reins do cover the neck joins, there are some substantial gaps in the horse bodies in the front and on the rump that do need to be addressed in my opinion. So I'm using green stuff here. I'm fairly comfortable with green stuff. It doesn't take me too long. I'm using a metal spear shape sculpting tool. This one was from Games Workshop. I think they stopped selling it, but Army Painter sells their own version. The other tool I'm using is a color shaper. This is a size two with a taper point. Can't remember if it's soft or firm silicone. Unfortunately, I bought it about 10 years ago and it is great for smoothing out green stuff, working in the nooks and crannies there. All right, that'll do. I'm gonna prime these black using Molotow black ink through my airbrush. And then I'm gonna Zenithal highlight them with Liquitex titanium white ink. The plan is to use Army Painter paint directly over the Zenithal highlight here. I like using inks for priming. Don't gotta worry about clogs. So I assembled four of these bastards here. This isn't a painting video, so we're not gonna get too in depth here. The follow along with a horse. Like many of you, I hate painting horses and I'm always looking for a better way. The plan is to start out using Army Painter Speed Paint as the base coat for everything but the metals. After that, I'll give it a highlight or two and hopefully call it good. Many of you know I'm a slow and picky painter, so I'm really not sure if I'm gonna be satisfied with these results. There's a lot of flat open area on the steed, so I'm really pretty dubious at first. Once I smooth over, the splotchiness a little with some scale 75 paint. I'm, I'm actually digging it, I, I like it. The Zenithal and Speed Paint really help guide the highlighting here. The overall look is a little sloppier than my usual stuff, but if you're looking at it a couple feet away on the tabletop, looks pretty darn good. Here are the four of them, as done as they're gonna be for now. I've left their shields gray as I'm going to be using some decals in the future. And similar idea with the bases. These could be the start of a new army or I might just give them away for one of the quarterly drawings on Patreon. Gotta say though, I do like how they're looking on the 32 millimeter rounds here. I've got mixed opinions on the speed paint as far as the riders go, but they did go quicker than usual, so I'm not really sure what I was expecting. Enough about the paint though. Probably dive into that on a different video. We're looking at the models themselves and overall we I think they look pretty good. So a couple things to watch out for. These riders do fit snug onto their horses for the most part. Be careful with this pose. I kind of wanted him leaning forward and I wasn't looking at the back of him so it ended up with a, a gap here so just careful about that. I mentioned the mold lines on the horse's legs are pretty faint but they they are there so make sure you get them. You can kind of see a little bit on this guy. I kind of had to use some uh, painting highlight tricks to hide where I missed it on the other guy so make sure you do a good job there. The last thing to look out for is weird little thing. This one sword arm right here. Uh, it's kind of, it's a long arm. I actually trimmed it down already before gluing it on. You can see compared to this one, this one, this other sword arm is actually maybe a little long too. So I would just chop off another millimeter or two for attaching it. Not, not a deal breaker. As far as scale goes, I actually don't have a lot to compare it to, unfortunately. Just a late Roman hearthguard model I did up a while back. The horse is a Fireforge Mounted Sergeant horse. The rider is a Gripping Beast metal figure. So is the goth small or the Roman guy big? I would say both actually. The goth was a little small when I was eyeing him up with some infantry. And the Roman guy, he was a little big, a little chonk. Take that for what it's worth. I don't think you have a problem slotting these guys in with your historical collection. Overall, it's a solid kit and a good 
addition to the Gripping Beast Plastics range. They have Dark Age Cavalry already, but those are unarmored. Between that kit and this one, it will be very easy to build a all-mounted Saga army. You use the unarmored bodies for the warriors and these chainmail bodies for the hearth guard. You can use these goth heads, Roman heads, the original Dark Age cav, kind of generic heads or something completely different. If you have any questions about what you saw in the video, if I was missing something that I should include next time, please let me know in the comments. Similarly, if you own this kit, let me know what you thought about it below. I think it's one of GB's better kits, but I know there's a lot of competition out there nowadays, and I don't actually own too many other plastic kits in the historical space at the moment, but that's something I'm hoping to rectify. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Saga! If you'd like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Thursday Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.